Hello and welcome to Currency Point presented by me, Evan Lucas for FP Markets. As always, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature. None of it should be relied upon as any form of personal advice. FP Markets does not know your personal scenario, nor your personal financial goals, and therefore none of it should be relied upon as any advice at all. It's just general in nature only. Getting tough, and I told you this last week, it's gonna be a really, really tricky year 2022 compared to what we've had in 2020 and 2021. It's not gonna be as simple as choosing an absolutely standout core currency and riding the momentum and understanding why we're riding it because there is now competition in what's gonna be a very, very busy year for central banks and who's gonna hike rates first. Last week, it was all about the RBA and the fact that the RBA who has basically been put into this corner of we're not raising rates for 2024 has all of a sudden and is in a scenario where it could possibly raise rates five times this year alone. Have a look at this chart, this is from the ASX, and this is the implied probability of rate rises this year and somewhat into next. And if you have a look, December is saying by the end of this year, the cash rate could be 1.08%. That's implying that by the end of the year, there will be five rate rises going from moving up to a quarter notch and then doing four quarter knot rises from there. That's an incredible movement to be thinking about in terms of what's gonna happen and where it could be. But that's not the only bank out there. We know the Fed is clearly in line to do that. And looking into next week, Super Bank Week, it's gonna be a big one. The Fed clearly could put their QE program to bed even sooner than expected with the idea that they could raise rates in probably March, maybe even as late as April or May. The BOC, also same reasoning and behind it. Why we wanna talk about that is that the data at the moment is incredibly robust despite Omicron. Again, looking back into Australia and having a look at the unemployment rate from last week, 4.2%, that is now 0.3% below the RBA's rate of what they believe is full employment. So therefore there's an argument that rate rises come with the fact that wages are now starting to really move. This week, looking into Australia, you get the CPI numbers and having a look at that. And the expectation is for the fourth quarter that we will have seen pretty decent inflation. Will it be the first time since September 2015 that core CPI in this country actually goes into their target band of two to 3%. It's pretty probable that it will happen. So keep an eye on that as well. But then you look into the states and you look at what the Fed is grappling with. You've got an employment rate that is currently at the best level they've seen basically since the Trump presidency. You then also throw into the fact that wages over there are growing at an incredible clip. And then inflation at 7%, that's an in stupid, stupid high number that they can't accept. And even their most dovish members over there are saying that. What does that mean for FX though? And you've seen that from last week. Again, the best two strongest currencies from last week were the Aussie dollar and the yen, a risk currency and a defensive currency. It just shows you how difficult it's now gonna be. You have a look at things like cable, hugely, hugely volatile in terms of where it sits. You look at Euro dollar, same thing again. All that suggests that you're gonna have to be very, very picky and very choosy about what you do this year and making sure that when you go with it, have your stop losses backing you up because we are gonna see some whip-soaring events.